Hello, everyone. We're just waiting for everyone to join. So in like a minute or so, we'll begin. So Razan, maybe you can um, share the link to the down. Yes, to so the, uh, I'm going to put a link in the chat. And it has like um, instructions on what you need to do today. So here is the link. Okay, so welcome everyone to our Islamic Geometric Patterns Remixed Workshop. Uh, my name is Razan. I'm from the Dubai Institute of Design and Innovation. And today's workshop is in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture and Youth uh, for their summer camp. So before we begin, before Professor Sajil begins, we're going to show you a quick video and then we'll, we'll start. No great thing, no beautiful invention happened just like that. It happens when we leave our comfort zone and embrace change, creativity, and out of the ordinary. We live in interesting times. We live in a world that's constantly asking questions, that's constantly changing. In a world where blockchain and robots will be the norm, where 85% of tomorrow's jobs don't exist yet. Where being multi-skilled is not just celebrated, but essential. At Dubai Institute of Design and Innovation, we believe that we need to prepare you for the future, to teach you skills that will power your tomorrow. Today, design matters more than ever. But how can design help, you may ask? We combine disciplines so you become well-rounded. From product design, multimedia design, fashion design, strategic design management, it's where you will learn how to merge different design disciplines. Presenting a four-year Bachelor of Design degree in collaboration with MIT and Parsons New School of Design, DIDI, not just another design university. All right, see, Sejil, over to you. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, you're welcome to share all your creations at the end of the workshop on social media. So if you do, please tag us at DIDIDXP. All right, Sejil, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, one sec. I should. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's very exciting to. Um, lead this workshop today. So Razan just shared uh, a link to some instructions that you need to follow before we start the workshop. Uh, so there's two things you need to sign up for. The first is an account to open processing. And then the second is a Pinterest account. So this should just take about five minutes. So I'll just give everyone five minutes to do this before we get to the presentation. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free during the workshop just to uh, shout out. I'm happy to hear from you. Or if you feel shy, uh, it's also okay if you just ask a question in the chat. Okay, so I'll just I'll just share my screen. It has a link to the instructions also. Sir? Yeah. Uh, so should we make an account? Yes, make make accounts. So make accounts for open processing and Pinterest. So we join or sign? Uh, sign up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir.
So let's say we'll give you until 310 to do this. Sir, I have a yeah. question. Yes. Do we have, uh, when we sign in, do we have to put our email or we should create a new email? Uh, just, just put whatever email you have. It's fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Hello, so anyone who just recently joined, what you need to do now is there are some instructions in the chat. So just follow the instructions. So you need to sign up for an account to open processing and Pinterest uh, before we start the presentation. So I'm just giving until 3.10 before we start. Okay. So after, what do we do after we're done, sir? Uh, we'll, start at, we'll start in two minutes. Did you open the example code? That would be the next step. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, great. Okay, so just one more minute. If any, is everyone okay? If there's any more questions, just yes, feel free yes. in the uh, chat. Uh, do I have to to write this link again? Well, it's available here. Uh, just make it. Just make an account. Where? Uh, at Open Processing and on Pinterest. So there's a link in the chat to these things. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so if you if you um if you follow the link in the chat, there's a there's a document where you can see all these instructions also. Okay, so I guess, I guess we'll just uh, get started. For everyone who just joined, um, there are some instructions in the chat. Uh, here, I'll add it again. One sec. Um,
So there, yeah, so I just shared the link. So it will give you these, these links to open processing and Pinterest. So you just have to make an account. Okay, so I'll, I'll get started. And you also have access to these slides. Uh, Hello. Hello, how are you? So if you just joined, just follow the uh, instructions in the document in the chat. Uh, and it's going to ask you to sign up for an open processing account and a Pinterest account. So two things you need to sign up for, and then we'll uh, use those for the workshop. So I'm just going to get started now on the presentation. So to, uh, today we're going to look at something called Islamic Geometric Patterns Remixed. And what we're going to learn how to do is how to take inspiration from traditional patterns uh, in the Islamic world, used in ornament, fashion, architecture, and how we can reimagine them using digital design to generate new types of patterns uh, using images that we we like. Um, so, what are Isl Islamic geometric patterns? Um, they're basically aesthetic motifs based on the repetition of geometric shapes. And they come from uh, basically the idea of how to invoke the infinite uh, with the kind of constraint that um, depictions of the human form were not possible or are not possible in, uh, in, uh, based on because of religious uh, traditions and beliefs. Um, so how do you represent the infinite? Um, so using geometry and mathematics, it's possible to create new types of uh, motifs and patterns. Um, and it uses different rules and shapes uh, to tile basically uh, simple geometries. Uh, but through the through using different types of rules, such as repetition, rotation, uh, mirroring, you can create these really intricate forms. Um, and so another one of the constraints is because uh, the people who are actually creating these geometries, these kind of patterns, uh, were craftsmen. And so when you wanted to communicate a design, uh, it would be, you could imagine it'd be very complicated to give a drawing uh, to the craftsman and for them to try to recreate it. Uh, so what they did instead was set a simple set of rules that could be repeated, um, a set of instructions uh, that would produce the form rather than a kind of preset drawing. Um, and so if we think of, uh, digital design processes uh, where we're using the computer to generate things. Uh, it really, there really is a connection that uh, we can um, use different types of procedures uh, to create new types of forms that would be uh, impossible to draw otherwise. Um, so here are some examples from the previous workshops um, where you can take found images and then create these really kind of interesting patterns. Um, so just keep going. So, so just a little bit more, like why is, why is this relevant to study uh, traditions that go back thousands of years in design today? And it really is about this idea of shape grammar, which is the foundation of uh, computational design, which we teach at GIDI, where instead of thinking of uh, drawing something, uh, you can develop systems of rules that will generate 3D and 2D shapes. So just to give an example of where this would be helpful, um, the first is analyzing found objects uh, in the real world. And so what you do as a designer is often to get inspiration 
you take inspiration uh, from something you find. And so, for example, one thing you could look at uh, is nature. Um, so these are just examples on the on the slide where you can see uh, different types of different types of uh, trees that have been uh, represented as a as a sort of grammar of different shapes, uh, which has to do with placing different branches at angles in a sequence, and then you can see they're using the same vocabulary for each of these trees on the right, but the sequence in which the rules are applied uh, creates a vastly different result. Uh, another example, so we could think of using uh, the shape grammar and the computational process to analyze examples that we can then use from this information to generate new things. Um, so on the right here, you can see that uh, these are different sketches of plane designs, which all follow the basic, uh, the, same, the same basic set of rules uh, in which there are wings, a body, and a tail. Uh, but you can see that there's slight variations in each design. And so you can see how, how are the rules um, organized and sequenced um, can produce a different type of design result. Uh, so when you're designing, you may not just design one type of object, but you might be thinking of like a series, like a line of cars or a line of cups, right? And so they all need to follow the same kind of logic, but have variations. And so you can use a grammar to do this. Um, okay, so if you can see here, just going from everything I said, here's an example of a, uh, a pattern. Um, I just want everyone just to take a look. And I'm, I just want to ask, uh, what types of rules or logic are behind this that you see? Can anyone tell me? Okay, so one's rotation, yes. Rotation, what's another rule? Circular, something like this. Circle? Yeah, I think, okay, yeah, so rotation, radius. Uh, what other types of rules? Repetition, yeah, so there's what's called a, uh, polar array, so you take a, a kind of motif and then rotate and copy it in a circle, symmetry. Yeah, so these are all like really good ones. You can see that the pattern is made up of smaller components. So there's uh, this kind of like a floral motif. Uh, there's different shapes. Uh, yeah, so you can see kind of smaller elements that like build up to make this uh, pattern. Oh, this is a good one, size. So you can think of scale too. So you have a very fine scale where you zoom in and it's incredibly detailed, but then when you zoom out, there's another type of pattern that begins to emerge. Yeah, so these are, these are all really good things. Uh, so today we're gonna kind of look at like how to produce something that looks like that using the mathematics of symmetry. Um, and so if you look at um, the kind of tradition of these patterns, there's very, uh, a very established set of rules that are applied that we, we just talked about. So size, array, mirroring, symmetry, rotation. Um, and so you can see in this slide how just using simple shapes that really a great deal of complexity can emerge. So if you can just see on this, um, like the image on the left with the circles, just by taking circles and arraying them in a circle, other stage types of shapes begin to uh, be created. Uh, 
another another thing to consider is that uh, subtraction. So you can take a pattern and then merge it with another another pattern, and that in that overlapping, it also produce produces a sort of effect. So you can see that the kind of superposition of two patterns also is really present. Um, and so here's just a summary of some of the things we've been uh, talking about. These are the pa these are the rules we're going to look at today. So reflection, taking a, a shape and reflecting it, rotation, arraying, and subtraction. And we're going to learn how to code these up. So uh, yeah, so just to get started, uh, here, let me get get to the workshop. So I hope that's clear to everyone. If anyone has any questions, feel free to jump in. So now um, I want you to follow this link to open the example file. So by this point, everyone should have created an account to open processing. I was just going to take a, a second to open the example file. Here, let me try again. Okay, so everyone should. Was everyone able to get to this screen? Yes, so. Yeah? OK. OK, so in the slides, there's all of these instructions are in the slides. Um, but the big thing you need to know is that we're using something called P5.js, which is a web-based programming language for different types of graphics. And what open processing does, it, it allows you to make simple codes um, where you can test it out in a, without down, downloading anything. Um, so when you open the example file, I, I want everyone to very carefully watch the steps I just tell you. So the first thing we need to do, um, maybe I'll zoom in my screen, uh, is you click at the top, you click on this button that has two uh, two arrows, these two brackets, and just click on that. And what that does is it opens up the uh, code. So everyone click on these two brackets. And then once you do that, uh, there are three dots on the right-hand side, and click on that. And then you're going to go to Editor, and where it says Layout, I want you to click on the option on the right side. Um, and so by the end of this, you should be able to have them on the left side, your code, and then on the right side, the result of the code, which is just this image. Uh, so it's, OK, so I'll do it one more time. OK, so, so I'll just do everything back. So OK, so when you get to the, uh, when you get to the example code, you'll see a screen like this, where it just sees, you see an image of a little texture in the corner. And so to get your um, screen, so we can work, you need to do two steps. And the first step is to click on this button with the two triangular brackets. And then what you're going to do, so that will open this screen with the code. And then what you're going to do is uh, there, you have to click on the options. 
with these three dots and then where you go over so it says sketch files editor you click on editor and where it says layout you click on the second option on the right hand side and then that we'll do is bring up this screen so i can repeat this again uh, it's also in the slides all these steps are in the slides to how to get to this point um, Okay, so I'll just move on to the next thing. Is, there, is, everyone, is everyone okay? Okay, so the next thing you need to do is you need to make a copy of this code. Um, and so we call this forking, where you take the code and make a copy that you're going to edit on your account. And so the way to do this is in the top right corner, um, there is a, uh, there's a button that has three circles and lines connecting on it. And what I want you to do is click on that. And then uh, at the bottom, it says create fork. That's so what you're going to do is you're going to click on that. OK, so I'll give everyone like a, a minute to create a fork. So how you create a fork is you click on the, the circle with the three dots. and then at the bottom where it says create fork, you're going to click on that. Does anyone need me to repeat the steps? All good. Okay, is there anyone else who needs help to get how to get to this point? So I'll just I'll quickly uh, I'll just quickly go through it again. Okay, so what you're going to do is here here are all the instructions uh, for the tutorial. I'll share the link again. To the chat. So you're going to follow the instructions. You're going to create an account at Open Processing. And then when you click on step three, which is open example file, then it's going to take you to a page that looks like this uh, with an image of a, a pattern in the top left corner. And so what you need to do is you need to set up the working environment for the workshop. So that you just need to do three steps. The first step is to click on these two arrows, which will bring up your code. The second step is to show what is the result of the code. So on one side, you want to have the code and the other, the, the, what's the product of the code. So to do that, you're going to click on these three buttons and uh 
When you click on the three buttons, it opens this option panel. And you can see here it's sketch, files, and editor. So you're going to go to editor. And where it says layout, you're going to click on the layout button. And you can see it brings up the, the image of the texture um, on the right hand side. And then the final step is to fork the code, which means to copy it. So you're just going to make a copy of this code. And you're going to do that by clicking on at the top. There's three circles connected by lines. You're going to click on that. And then it will give you an option at the bottom to create a fork. And you're going to click on that. So if you click on that, it will create a new, new fork, which is a copy. And it's going to open it. So I hope that's clear. I can only I can see only um, uh, only a few of you have been able to to fork the code yet. So I'll just give a few more minutes to do this. Uh, only nine people have forked the code yet. So I'll give you a few more minutes to do this. If you have any questions or problems, just let me know. I'll give two more minutes. Okay, is anyone else stuck? Okay, so I'll just I'll keep going ahead. Uh, if you need the instructions, they're all in the slides too. So you can just follow along in the slides and it will tell you how to do the steps, how to open your account and how to fork the code. So you can also look at the slides. I cannot uh, open it from uh, pardon. iPad. Pardon? It should be open only from the computer or laptop. Yeah, you need a laptop. I cannot open it from iPad. Oh, it does. It won't work on iPad. Okay. All right. So you can you can follow along. Um, so all the steps are here. So don't worry about it. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead uh, with the workshop. So hopefully most of you are all set to go. Um, and so there are three steps to generating the pattern. So the first step is I want everyone to uh, get an image. So just go on Google and find some images uh, that you're going to play with for the workshop. So you can see uh, this point to So yeah, so what would make a good image is a something that's a square 
image. So could everyone find two or three images they want to use for the workshop? And a good place to look is maybe Instagram images. So you want something that's a square um, and it can be anything. So I have an image of some trees. I have uh, a picture of the moon. It can be anything. So just everyone just take uh, three minutes to find a couple images or maybe three or, three or four images that you want to use. Uh, sir? Yeah. Uh, we should take images only of uh, things and patterns or we can take images of people also? You, you're free to do anything you, you would like for the images. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, so I'll repeat this, but once you have your images, what you can do is you can go back to this um, options tab. And if you go to files, you can upload your images into this code. Yeah, so if you go to the three, three dots, you can see a tab for files, and then you can add your images here. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, so here here's some other patterns. So maybe um, I'll add this one. But this one's this is a little bit of a problem. It's easier if you have a simple file name. So if you find an image, just rename it to something uh, something simple that's easy to type. So maybe I'll call this uh, green orange. So you have a simple file name and then you can just upload it here on the right hand side. And the, this will work best if the image is a square. Okay, so I'll just give one more minute. So there's two things. One is to find some images, rename it to a simple, easy to type name, and then add it to your code using the files tab. Okay, so once, once you do that, uh, if you go down in your code, um, there is some, some, uh, some things typed here, where it says like merge, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, etc. I just want you to delete this. Uh, we, we can get back to that. This is where we're going to type our procedure. And then what you can do to see your file is on the top, in the top middle, there's this sort of circular arrow button. Click on that and you should be able to see your image. Um, so here, it's, it should show like a tree. And if you want your image, what you need to do is where it says tree dot JPEG, write the file name of the image that you had uploaded. So the file or the file name for me is green orange. So you can see it here. Okay, so how to re so I'll just repeat again how to upload the pictures. Okay. So once you have your pictures, click on these three dots, which is the options. You're gonna click on that and then you're going to see how there's the sketch files editor tabs. You're going to click where it says files. 
And then to upload the image, uh, you can just click on, click on select. And from your hard drive, you can find your image that you had downloaded and then upload it here. But it's very important that you rename the file name to something that's easy to remember. Um, so here, I'm going to say like maybe leaves.jpg. That's how you upload the image. And then if you want to see it in your screen, um, on line 11, where it says link one, rename, rename this link uh, to your file name. So I'm going to type leaves. And if you press the play button, it will, you'll see it in the, the screen. You can, you can upload all the images all at once. You can just do it all in one step. And then the other thing is uh, in this part of your code where it says algorithm, just delete everything that's in here for now. We'll get back to it. There's some code in between where it says start editing and editing, just delete um, everything that's in there. OK, so is, that, is everyone able to get to this tab? If there's prob a problem uploading your image, um, maybe try a different, a different image. You also don't want an image that is uh, too, the file size is too big. You want something that's maybe under 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. Sir? Yep. Uh, when I'm changing the name of uh, the image, like here it's, it was written as tree.jpg. Yeah. So I changed it to the name of my image and then yeah. I press the reload button. And instead of the image which I had saved, some other image is coming. Oh, see here where it says algorithm, like on line 17? Yes. Delete all the code that's inside these two, um, where it says start and end, delete everything that's inside there. And then try to run it again. So like I can show you here, like there's some stuff from the previous work workshop, just delete it. And then um, if you run, if you press the play button, you'll see your image there. OK, so is everyone at the step where they see their image on the screen? Oh, yeah. You can only see one image at a time. You can just see the different images by changing the, the name here. OK. And then one thing, too, for, um, for uh, this workshop, it's very important that the spelling is correct. If, if there's a mistake in the spelling, your code won't work. To run the program, there's a button in the top center, this like arrow with a circle. You just click on that. Uh, and it will run your code. So every time you make a change to run it, you have to click this button. Okay. Yeah, you can do a PNG is okay too. Okay, so I'll just quickly go to the next step and then I can run through this again at the end. Um, so we did the first part to get an image. Now we're going to create an algorithm. So I just want to ask everyone, does anyone know uh, does anyone know what is an algorithm? Can someone tell us what they think an algorithm is? It's related to maths. Yeah. Pattern. Any other idea what's an algorithm? I 
I think an algorithm is like a pattern of steps or a repeating pattern that happens every time. Okay, steps of what? What are the steps? Said has an interesting one, a code that has a meaning. That's really an interesting interpretation. Um, the other idea that's like really interesting is that it repeats. So in our definition, a really simple and easy way to understand what is an algorithm is it's a sequence of steps. Um, so the analogy I like to give about an algorithm is uh, recipes for cooking. So there are different tasks you need to do, different steps, but the order is really important. So if, for example, in lasagna, the first step is to turn on the oven. You wouldn't put the uh, lasagna in the oven as step five, right? That would mess up your, your recipe. So the sequence is really important. And if you change the order of the steps, it also will change the end result. And so in our code, yeah, so here we can say it's just a sequence of instructions that produces a solution. And what's important is that each step, it's really clear and easy to understand what each of the steps is. Um, so when we look at our code, right, um, we see that it's a series of inputs and functions. Uh, and so if you've never coded before, you don't need to know a lot of coding for this workshop. But the main idea is that uh, the order in which you apply a, uh, a kind of rule is very important. And so where we're going to begin editing our patterns is here where it says algorithm. Uh, we're going to try two things. So the first is we're going to type horizontal, which is a, um, a reflection of the pattern. So if you just type horizontal and run, you can see that your pattern, it will be mirrored along the horizontal axis. And then the next thing you could type is vertical. And so you can see here, it's mirrored horizontally and vertical. So could everyone try to type uh, these two rules in our algorithm? So the first step would be make a horizontal reflection. And the second one is a vertical reflection. And it's, it's very important. So you type horizontal, but to have these two brackets, like an open and closed bracket. This means that it's running a what we call like a function in programming. So it just executes this little bit of code. So I'll give everyone a, a couple minutes to do this and then we'll go to the, the next set of rules. Uh, it's also, you can see in the slides, there's an example code in the slides. Um, okay, so once you do horizontal and vertical, you can also try diagonal. Uh, let's see. And you can also you can also play with what image you want to to use. So here I'm using my tree. If you want to go back and use try one of your other images, you can also edit where it says link. You can change the name. The other thing, uh, I just want to take a step back. Here where it says save file. So what you've noticed is that uh, every time you run the code, it's downloading a limited little image. If you don't want that to happen, you can just type false. 
uh, and so there won't be an image that's downloaded. Maybe once you have a design you like, you can download it at the end. The other thing is where it says res. This is the um, size of the image. So right now it's really small. You can increase this number to have something more high resolution, but it's better to keep it really small right now where we're just playing around. And at the end, you can increase this number. So I can repeat this later, but that's what all of this stuff means. Uh, so here, yeah, rack. So just take a, just take like maybe one more minute and we can do the next set of rules. And where it says, uh, yeah, so Saeed, where it says like two backslashes, this won't affect the code. It's just a comment that explains what this line of code does. So you can see here too, like the order you can play, if I do a diagonal, then horizontal, it'll create a really different result than if I do horizontal, then diagonal. So the sequence is important. Okay, so the next rule you could try is called array. And so this will tile your image in a grid and you, when you type it, you need to add these numbers. Oh, sorry. I'll zoom in. So here you can see when I typed array, I put two by two, two comma two, and this is means array in a two by two grid. So you can see here that it's creating a grid of the images, two by two. You could put another number. You could put two by four or uh, one by four but it starts to really distort the image. So that's why it's good to do two by two. So what you could see too is like, what if I array the image first? If I array the image first and then apply reflection. And then you could also like, you could then again array it. So you could do array, then apply reflections and then array it again in the last step. And then you get a, like a kind of interesting pattern, right? So yeah, play with array. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit. Okay, so, okay, you could try array. Just a small thing, if you wanna hide your code, you can just press control backslash and it will, it will do what's called comment it out so you can see the code, but you, it won't run. It's grayed out. And if you want it to uncomment it and run it, you can press control backslash again. Um, so I'll show you one more, a new rule, and that is, uh, it's called uh, rotation. And here, what rotation does is it will rotate your image in a circle and you have to give a number. So I'll put like six. And you can see here that it's rotating the image six times. In a, in a circle, 360. So now try a rotation with array, diagonal, vertical, and horizontal. See what you can come up with.
if you have a if you have a nice result, feel free to just share it in the chat also. It's cool. So I'll just go through the next step. I'll, we'll try to get through everything and then I can go through uh, all of the steps again for anyone who might have uh, missed anything. Okay, so the next step you can use. So right now we're just, we just have our first image. If you wanna combine your images, if you, okay. Uh, yeah, so, the next thing you could use to use both of your images, you can type merge. So you can see, uh, so here you can see you're like merging the two images. Um, maybe it looks nicer like this actually. You can merge your two images and it just will split it in half. And then, okay, so once you combine the two images, maybe you can begin to play with the, the rules again. Or maybe I'll use three. Yeah, like this is starting to get kind of interesting. Okay. Okay, and so the final rule I'll show um, is called uh, deletion. So remember I, I told you about um, subtraction is also a rule in these types of patterns. So you actually like delete parts of the pattern to create new types of shapes. So you can use deletion and then you enter a number. And so what this will do, it will reduce the number of colors in the image. So if I put deletion five, that will mean that the image will only have uh, five colors in it. So you can play with this to get different types of effects. So you can see it starts to become much more abstract here. Let's look at Christiana's image. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's very cool, very cool. Okay. Okay, so I showed all the rules. So everyone, um, if you've been able to get to this point, just experiment. We'll spend like the next half an hour, we can experiment and see what we come up with. So just try different um, orders of design rules, uh, different image inputs. And then when you have something that you really like, to make it higher resolution, here in line seven where it says res, you could change this number to a bigger number, let's say like 600. And where it says save file, right, press true. And you can run play and it'll take, it'll take a little bit more time. Uh, It'll take some time, but then um, when it's done generating, it will download to your computer a higher resolution image. So you can see here. Okay. But if you're just playing, just keep this as a smaller number. And maybe you don't want to save the file. Okay, is there anyone who wants me to go through all of the steps again? We're stuck on anything.
if you have if there's a problem with your code um you can see here at the bottom of your screen this is called the console and this will tell you if there's any errors so see here let's let's just make a spelling mistake if i put like trees and it typed the file name incorrectly you can see here that there's a little message where it tells you there was a problem with your image um, So if there's an error, you can know that there's there's a um, there's something wrong with your code. So just always check the spelling. Okay, so maybe I'll go through all of the steps again quickly. And if you were able to get to this point, just continue exploring. And when you find uh, when you find a result you like, just save it. OK, if you want to merge the three pictures, um, OK, I'll tell you, it's, it's not, um, oh wait, there's a trick to do the three images. Uh, so what you can do is the image you download is, um, reduce the file size. So the image that you downloaded, okay, so if you wanna merge all three images, what you could do is you could download the image that you created um so let me see you can download the image that you created and then upload it where it says files upload the image that you made back into the files yeah so you can get some interesting results from that um Okay, so I'll go through all the steps again for anyone who might be lost. Um, okay, so the first step is uh, if you go through, uh, I'll go through all the steps. So the first step is opening the, uh, opening the instructions and there's five instructions creating an open processing account, signing up for Pinterest, and opening the example file. So open processing, you can create an account. This is where we're gonna create our code. Sign up for Pinterest, I think everyone knows what that is. And then the example file. So you're gonna open the example file. Might take a little bit of time. Okay, so you're gonna open the example file. And you'll, what you'll probably get is a screen that looks like this. Where you just see an image on the corner. So when you get to this screen, you're gonna click on these, this button with the two triangular arrows. You're gonna click on that. And then it's going to show um, a screen with a lot of text here, which is our code. Um, but we want to see our code and the results of that code. And so to change how this window looks, you can click here where there's three dots. And where it says sketch files editor, you're going to click on editor. And then you're going to change the layout. And so where it says layout, you're going to click, click on the second option which is uh, showing two windows. One is the code, and one is the result of the code, which is an uh, image. And then uh, the window is looking good at this point. From here, you're going to fork the code. 
and forking means uh, making a copy of the code that you're going to edit. Um, and so the way to do that is there are these three circles connected with lines at the top of the page. You're going to click on that, and it will open this tab. And you're going to click on the bottom where it says Create Fork. And when you create a fork, what this is doing is it's copying the example code to your account. So you have your own code that you can edit. And so, uh, let's see. Okay, so once you create a fork, it should open a new page. And you can see that there's uh, here in the top left corner, on the top left corner, it should say IGP Remix Workshop, and then it should say your name, not my, not my name. OK? And then if you, if you got lost on any of these steps, all of the steps are also in this, the link to the slides that I provided. Um, so all these steps are here. OK, so once, once you've opened the example file, uh, we need to do three steps. The first is to uh, first is to get some images, create an algorithm, and generate patterns. So, getting images, you can just find uh, some images on Google uh, of anything, but prefer like preferably they're square images in shape and not too high resolution. And then, OK, so once you have the images, what you're going to do is go back again to these three dots, to the options. And where it says Files, you can add your images here. And so what you're going to do is you can click on Select. And you, on your desktop of your computer, add images from your, your files, the ones that you downloaded. And you can see here, sometimes when you download an image, it has a really uh, complicated name. So it's really important. Before you upload it, just put a more uh, straight, like a simple name. So maybe like I rename this to pink or purple. So I'll add these two images. So you can see here on, this, on the left-hand side, On left hand side, pink and purple are, are there. And so there's some old code. OK, so once we have our images, we're going to create the algorithm, which is step two. And the algorithm is a sequence of instructions. Uh, and then so just to see your image, first just like delete the code that's here in algorithm. and it. To run the program, just click on this button at the top center that's a circle with an arrow. Just click on that. And you'll see an image uh, of some trees that change which image comes up. You can, where it says link one, change the file name. And so I can say, OK, pink or purple. Uh, so that's where you change what image you're using. And right now, by default, it's automatically downloading the image every time you press play. And we don't want that. We want to do it at the last step. So where it says save file, where it says true, you can rename this to false. And it won't, it won't download an image. Um, and to begin playing and creating your OK, sorry. OK, so then OK, once you have your image that you want to use, or let's see. Maybe I'll use desert. Uh, OK, 
What's also very important is that the way you spell it is correct. So here it's desert.jpg. Okay, so to begin to play around with the code where it says algorithm, you can start typing different design rules. So maybe we want to do a horizontal reflection. You can type horizontal. Uh, and you can see that it will take the image and reflect it horizontally. You could also reflect it vertically using vertical. You could reflect it diagonally by using diagonal, diagonal. And it'll be a diagonal reflection. And you can also use these rules together. So I could do diagonal, then horizontal, and see, let's see what happens. Right? You could do diagonal, horizontal, vertical. And that will create a different type of result. And you can also repeat different rules. So you could say diagonal, horizontal, diagonal, vertical. So these are different design rules uh, that have to do with reflections. There's other rules that have to do with a rain. So the first is a rain, which is basically like tiling your image. You can do that using the array. Sorry, I'll just zoom in a bit. You could use the array function. And here you have to specify what is the grid. So here I'm putting two comma two. And so this will take your image and put it in a two by two pattern. So you can see it starts to become much more complex. You could also use um, and use a rotation, which is basically copying it, but in a circle. So I can say rotation six. And you can see here, it's, it's rotating it six times. I could say rotation 24. You can see, and then now it's rotating it many more times. So you can change this number and it'll have a different result. Um, you can also combine these different types of rotations together. So maybe I'm going to do a rotation and an array. This is actually a pretty interesting pattern. I like it. OK, so you could combine them together. OK, but this is just one image. So you can also combine your second image. Uh, I'll just comment out these steps. So if you use the command merge, It will combine your two images together. Just one half is the first image and the second half is your second image. And then you can begin to apply the rules again. Um, yeah, so, okay, so when you get to this tab, maybe you wanna download your uh, download your file. So here you can see it's very low res, and this is just low res, just so it's faster to run the code. What you could do is use a bigger number. So maybe we say 500 and save file, we'll put true. And so it will take a little bit longer to run. Uh, OK, so you can see here now, the image is much higher resolution. And so you can download it. It looks really nice, right? Uh, yeah, so that's the final step. And then, OK, well, the final, final step is once you have something you really like, I would invite everyone uh, just to go to uh, the Pinterest board for the workshop. And so I really want to see everyone's work. So once you have your image, if you can add it to, to the Pinterest board, uh, I would love to see that.
Okay. So yeah. So here's here's the last step. Uh -huh. It's just loading. So on the last step, once you're you're done with your image you like, you can add a pin. So you can add your pen, um, give it a name, and just save it, and you can share it with everyone. So I want to see everyone's work. So I'm really excited to see what everyone comes up with. OK, any other questions? I just ran through it a second time. So maybe another, let's give another 15 minutes for everyone um, to try different things. If, you, if you're done with a pattern, maybe find new images and try to create a new one. So if everyone, maybe if everyone could add three, three patterns to the Pinterest, then we can be done the workshop. Okay, so to save the image, there's just an option here where it says save file equal to true, uh, it might say save file equals to false. You set this to true. And what happens is when you run the code, it will automatically download it to your computer. Yeah, so you can see the exhibition here, the growing exhibition. Let's see, there's some new ones. Well, this is nice, I really like it. One thing is that um, some of the results, it's really interesting if you use a, uh, like a, a picture of a landscape versus something that's very geometric as your input, or if you use a cartoon, the, how it looks like looks uh, very different. So some people, some people had used um, in the past, they used something that was already a, a pattern um, and it has a kind of interesting effect. And just to add to Pinterest, yeah, uh, there's just a button, it's a plus sign, you click on that to add a pin, to create a pin. Okay, let's see if anyone else added more.
if you're having problems saving it, even if uh, it says save file equals true and it's not downloading to your computer, um, there's some settings with your browser, some security settings that's preventing it. What you could do is just right click on the image and where it says save image as, you can just save it this way. Sir? Yeah. How do I add my images in the Pinterest board? Uh, yeah, so here, just one sec. So to add to Pinterest, you can just open the board. It's a public board. So the link is in the Google Doc. It says join Pinterest board. So you're going to open that. And then to add a pin, there's just this plus sign. On the right side, you can click on that. It says create pin. And then here you can add your image. And then okay, you just save so it. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. Nice. If you're, see how your image, um, if your image is a bit um, pixelated like this, uh, feel free to change the resolution. So here, if you put like 500 or 1,000 even, it will increase the resolution of the image. If you're having trouble trouble with saving too, you can just right like right click on the image directly 
and say save save image as and we'll download. Okay, let's see what else people have come up with. Um, whoa, is this BTS? That's amazing. Yes. Okay, I love it. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> This is really cool. This is really nice. So you can see there's a lot of a lot of variety that's possible. Well, this is really interesting. So one thing, one thing you might want to try to is like, um, once you have your pattern, maybe you keep the same rules, but you could change the parameters. So here, maybe instead of like rotation four, like what if I put twelve? How does that affect it? Um, maybe say nine, and the array I changed to three by two. Let's see. You can get a really different result just by changing the parameters. Okay, so yeah, someone's asking how to add to Pinterest. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so once you open the Pinterest board, on the right-hand side, there's a plus button. So you can just click on that, and it will go create pin. And this is where you can add uh, your file by clicking and dragging it here. And you just give it a title. And you can save it. You can go see it now. What about the resolution of the image? So you give a big resolution? Yeah, yeah, so the resolution um, here in settings, so here it says line seven, var res equals, just change this number. If you change it to 500, uh, it, it should say like 150. If you change it to 500, it will look, it will look a lot nicer. But you can see it instead of taking uh, one second, it might take like 10 or 15 seconds to come up.
I noticed, I noticed there's some problems. Like if you put this number too big, there might be some problems with downloading it. So uh, I find that I get a good result if I, if for 500. And this just has to do with the amount of memory that's used. Okay, is there, is there any more questions? Maybe five more minutes and then we can wrap up. Whoa. That looks so good. Really nice work. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. This one's amazing. Wow, that's so nice. This one with a mountain view, very nice work. This is very cool.
That's amazing. Wow. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Is anyone there? I can't hear. Anything? Awesome. Hello? Are you there? Hello? Hello, hi. Hello? I'm sorry, does someone have a question? Hello? Hello, is anyone there? What is your question? Hello? I can't hear anyone. We can hear you. Hello?
Okay, we can um, we can wrap up. Uh, so I'd just like to thank everyone who uh, participated in the workshop today, and also the um, the Ministry of Youth and Culture for organizing this workshop. Uh, if you want to know anything more about DIDI, please feel free to email Razan. Uh, you have her email address. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. And if you want to keep adding patterns, if you had a lot of fun and you want to keep going, just feel free. Uh, I'll keep checking the Pinterest of board to see if there's anything new. I, I really love seeing the work. So thanks, everyone. I hope everyone has a, a great day. Okay, bye. Thank you for this workshop, sir. Thank you. Thanks.